Hello, hello, what's on the broadcast? Welcome to Glue Wednesday. G L U E, God's love undoes everything. This is my weekly broadcast, and as some of you may know, it's because so many times people think of Wednesday as hump day. And I say that Wednesday is actually the middle of a traditional seven day week connecting the weekend and the weekends, uh, the weekend and the week beginning. So it's actually the glue that keeps the week together. And in terms of me being word sensitive and creative, I always say we don't need to get over, we don't need to hump, we need to keep it together. We need the glue. And the glue we need is God's love because it undoes everything. Whatever trials and tribulations you're going through, remember the operative word is a self fulfilling prophecy. It's through. So give yourself credit for all you've been through and get yourself ready for what you, what's up ahead. Uh, that's, that's the faith, F-A-I-T-H, feeling as if there's hope. Recognizing that the only thing you cannot do is what you have not done, and that's giving up. Because had you given up, you wouldn't be on this broadcast, but more importantly, you wouldn't be in this life, in this world, making the difference that you make for so many people that you can't even count. So keep being yourself. Thanks for showing up. Hey, Joey, man, good to see you. And um, keep being yourself. Keep showing up and know that you make a difference. Well, uh, one of the things I tell people a lot, I've got, I've got some uh, letters behind my name, uh, Certified Stress Mastery Educator, Certified Human uh, humor Professional, uh, 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 ACSCL, uh, uh, Accomplished, <laughs> Advanced, Communicator Silver, competent leader. Uh, you know, these these are all great. And then also when I was at the Wall Street Journal, I had initials behind my name. But the most important title behind my name these days is uncle. I love being an uncle, and there's a huge responsibility to that. So, uh, you know, whatever your title is, think about it. It makes a difference. One of the things that I've started doing, we've got less than a minute for the live broadcast, but you know, we don't need, we always have to have a stream of consciousness. One of the things that I start doing when I, uh, when I speak, especially if I have time, what I've been doing with my military audiences, is that I start out by going around the room and asking, how many of you have siblings? And so think of this, even as you're brought, as you're listening and tuning in, how many of you have siblings? How many of you have you come from a large family, a small family? You're the, the oldest child, the, the youngest child, the middle child. Uh, how many of you are married? How many single? How many have kids? See, and then once everybody has had a chance to raise their hand, because I'm going to cover all the categories, as many as possible, obviously, there are always more. But think about it. Think about all those hands that got raised. All of those hands that got raised were different perspectives. Everything, you know, however we look at stuff, we look at stuff through our lens. So I always say that I'm going to give you the three R's, not, not reading, writing, and arithmetic. But the research, the real stuff, and the resource. The research is the stuff you may see on the screen if I'm doing a presentation, uh, or even as we're talking here. The real stuff is what's going on in your life, and how does the research apply to what's going on in your life? Sometimes we look at research, and we have to recognize that we may not have been one of the ones who was a part of the research. So it's we're, we're basing statistics sometimes based on somebody else's life that may not have anything to do with our lives. So that's the real stuff. Use research to see how it applies to what's really going on in your life. Don't suck your teeth and shift in your chairs and say, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. I, this is a waste of my time. No, sometimes part of what we need to do is, is get that affirmation so we can go forward. If we see research that doesn't specifically apply to us, but we understand it and we know it, now we can affirm and confirm that we know. And that, isn't that a great feeling to know, wait a minute, I knew that already, and now I can move on. So that's the research, the real stuff, and the resource is who's delivering the research and who's, who's stirring up the real stuff. And in this case, it's going to be me. But in your case, it's you, you're the resource. So where are you coming from as a resource? I'm coming from a perspective most importantly, again, as being an uncle. And so I, I see the world through my lens as an uncle, as well as all of the other titles that I have. And, and those titles always will move you into some state of bias. 
And it's, we have what's called a confirmation bias in our lives and in our psyche. A confirmation bias is where we do research to prove a point that we want to make. Then once we find out, once we find the, the, the supportive information for our cause, we stop researching. <laughs> you know, and that's the option that you have. And so that, that's called the Velcro effect, where we find what we need and we let it stick. We say, okay, good, now I can make my point. I don't need anything else. Sometimes in our research, we come across what's called the Teflon effect. Think of Teflon where things slip off. So in other words, we find research that goes against what we believe, so we let that slip by because we don't want to talk about it. You see it going on in politics all the time. You see it in, in uh, talk shows. You see it in athletics. It's all it's there everywhere. So all of that to say, let's get started on this Blue Wednesday topic. Let me just do my quick shout out. Hellos to everybody. I already sent some love to Joey. Jasmine, good seeing you. I'm looking forward to working. This is a, this is a young lady who I just met a few weeks ago. And already, uh, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with what she's doing in terms of, of selling real estate and how she markets her business. But more importantly, how she carries herself as an individual and gives you a personal touch that makes you makes you want to do business with her. And in the long run, isn't that what we want is we want people to want to do business with us. Likewise, in my case, as a speaker, I want people to listen to me, to use me as a messenger. And that's what I want you to do as well. Want people to listen to you as a messenger. How do you do that? You make sure you deliver the right message. You make sure that you deliver the honest truth. I see my guy, Romeo, one of my youngest mentors. Uh, ment well, he's a mentor because he's my mentee, but we switch roles sometimes because I learn a lot from him. And what we always talked about when we did our public speaking class, when I was with the Boys and Girls Club back in Chicago, it's important to recognize that as a speaker, you want to reach one person per engagement. And, and I want to reach me each engagement. I'm not worried about reaching anybody else. I want to make sure I reach me by telling the truth. <clears throat> because today I might not, <clears throat> today I might not be your messenger. Depending on that, that perspective that we talked about of where you're coming from, I don't know what's going on in your day today. And that's the same thing you have to think about. Um, Romeo, uh, you know, he's he's now he's moved from being a, a member at the Boys and Girls Club to being one of the leaders, one of the counselors. And he has to recognize that those kids have to go through stuff to get to the safe haven of the Boys and Girls Club. So they're going to be days where he can't reach them. And that's the same thing I want to always remind our teachers of, that there are times where you can't reach a child and it's no fault of yours. You don't know what it took for them to get through and get to school. Homeboy Kwame is there. That's my, I'm, you know what? I'm going to be there in New York in July, so I'm going to have to figure out how to get to some of that cooking you be talking about, my brother. I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. At Charlotte, long time haven't seen you, so good to see your face in the place again. And, uh, and just, uh, just you know, I've, I've been um, um, hanging out with Pat Harris down here as well, so I'll definitely... Uh, you know, that, that sparks a memory. But let's get to today's topic. I'm not going to do any more shout outs because I want to make sure I get through this information. As you know, this is um, Mental Health Awareness Month. And I always laugh and say, yeah, month. We have to be aware of mental health all year. But certainly we have to be aware of everything all year. We can't let a, a man-made calendar uh, suppress our celebration and control who we are and what we do. We use it as a guideline. But as, excuse me, today I'm going to talk about a topic that I, I, is interesting because a lot of times when someone starts to talk about it, they say, well, we're going to talk about a topic that not a lot of people talk about, suicide prevention uh, awareness or suicide awareness prevention. And, and you know me being word sensitive, what we have to do is I'm excited about talking about this topic. Why? Because I'm not focusing on suicide. I'm focusing on awareness and prevention. It's important, we need to be excited to talk about this topic because this is a topic that can make a difference in our lives and in our world. When we, the more we know about it, the more we can do to help prevent it from touching our lives personally, but with somebody in our life taking their lives by suicide. So that's what I'm going to do today is give you some insight on that. And what I start, and I want to, I want to dedicate this presentation for this Glue Wednesday to the South Carolina Army National Guard and my good friend over there, Chris Allen, who's the director 
Uh, actually, I don't know what his title is, but he's he's in charge of it. And, but the thing is, hey Sam, oops, I told you I'm not gonna do shoutouts, but Sam Posen was one of the the man that gave me the one of the biggest chances that I could have in my career when I was at the Wall Street Journal, and it really helped me move along. And that's part of where I come up from with my sharing as well. But I'm dedicating this to the South Carolina Army National Guard, but also to the military. Because as it turns out, today is May 22nd. It's the 22nd of the month. And the South Carolina Guard does what's called check-in, buddy check 22. In other words, every 22nd of the month, we do a check-in on Facebook. And the reason being that 22 is the number that represents how many veterans take their lives by suicide on a daily basis. We lose 22 veterans to suicide a day in terms of the average and again the research and statistics so today today is buddy check 22 at the south carolina army national guard and as many people as possible if you could spread that word and help and check with people on the 22nd and just make sure they're doing okay that's how we can get get the momentum going in this as well and keep it moving all right oh man hey and just like that Chet Welsh, I know I'm not doing shout out, but Chet just signed on, and that's one of my South Carolina Army National Guard buddies, person is in my heart. Okay, so but here's what I'm gonna do. I started out thinking about reinventing the wheel, right? And I said, okay, once I decide I wanna do this topic, I said, oh, well, let me go, you know, get some more information. And then, and then, I, and then the, the thing is, as I went to get the information, I went to a presentation that I did that I had actually created for suicide prevention awareness in 2015. I went to get some information from that. And in the process of going to do that, I said, wait a minute, I should just share this information (laughs) rather than trying to reinvent the wheel and come up with new stuff. So actually I'm going to do it in two parts this week and next week because it's too much for me to get it all in in 30 minutes, which is my goal. And of course now we're down to how many minutes? We're down to 20 minutes here now, okay? So, but the reason, you know, not that the time the time is important, but I, I just want to say to you, we don't want to rush a topic, especially when we want people to really get the meat out of it sometimes. That, that's a fine line between what goes on with a speaker, with a teacher, with a, a leader, with a boss, with the commanders, a lot of people in our lives, children, parents, okay? But I, when I created the, the session, I called it my piece of the puzzle or puzzle. Because I want to let people know, you know my, my saying that life is about going from one puzzle to the next, you're either small, medium, or large piece of the puzzle, yet no matter what puzzle piece size you see yourself as, without you, the puzzle is incomplete. So I, I want people to see what piece of the puzzle do you play in suicide awareness prevention? Because we all play a part. And that's the thing, we've heard about suicide awareness prevention, and, but sometimes we don't see ourselves as a piece of that puzzle. So today I'm going to show you a little bit of how you are a piece of that puzzle. So what I did was when I gave the session, uh, I did it with an active army base in Massachusetts. And as they came in, everybody got a little business side card that had one of five letters from the word puzzle, P-U-Z-Z-L-E. So I had that somebody had a P-U-Z-L and an E. And so what I did was go, using those letters, I talked about suicide awareness prevention. And therefore, and th- now I say, okay, who's got this letter? And now here's what we're going to talk about. That what, has, what words come up from that letter that make you a part of this whole puzzle? So that's why it's my piece of the puzzle, and I wonder what cards you have, or puzzle. Do I not know where I am? So as people understood what piece of the puzzle they had, they could see how that was a part of the big picture. What I did naturally is because it's important to take people on a journey. So instead of going from P P through E, I did, I start out with the letter U because I think the letter U is the most important letter in terms of our puzzle because what we need to do about suicide and about life is understand. So I said, you know, who, who's got the U? And let's understand statistics 90 percent of people who die by suicide have a potentially treatable mental disorder at the time of their death a disorder that often has gone another you unrecognized and another you untreated so 90 percent of the people who take their lives by suicide 
it's a mental disorder. So this is Mental Health Awareness Month. And it's and, and so it, it's unrecognized and untreated. Hopefully I'm going to give you information that maybe you can recognize something and help somebody get to treatment. Uh, although we may hear the term, if you would go play the play, play back the uh, tape, you see, I say, who took their lives by suicide. Most people have heard the term, they committed suicide. But see, committed suicide has the, uh, the connotation of it was successful. If you even heard the term, a successful suicide. We don't want people to feel successful or committed to doing suicide like this was a great thing. So what we want to do is change our wording just a little and say that they took their life by suicide or died by suicide. What that does is allow us to be uh, more objective and a little less judgmental that someone's you know, committed suicide because there's, all, there's almost a little bite to it when we say it. So let's think about saying they died by suicide or, or took their lives by suicide. And also, this, this or and another term could be a suicide decedent, a suicide decedent. What this does is it could be more comforting to the family members to, to hear that type of, 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 uh, of language used about their lost loved one. And so that takes us to one more you in puzzle, and that is uncomfortable. Because some people, again, say that it's an uncomfortable topic to talk about, as well as it's uncomfortable to even say it. So see if you can find ways to pe make people more comfortable by saying they took their life by suicide, they lost their life by suicide, they were suicide decedent, rather than they committed suicide. And you're still going to hear that, by the way. We're not saying, and I'm not saying that the people who use that term, that terminology are wrong, but it's how, when we talk about making a difference, it's the, it's, the, it's the use of our language that can make that difference sometimes. So perhaps you could teach somebody like that. But also under the guise of understood, understanding suicide, let's look at two categories. One, the behavior, and the second would be the moods. What types of behaviors do you notice, uh, can you start to notice that someone may be considering taking their life by suicide? Overuse of alcohol or drugs searching online, you know, because they're looking for the, you know, that now online we've got those suicide websites that have people have like a suicide challenge. Uh, there's restlessness where, you know, they, because they're thinking about it. And so they want to kind of get people away. And, 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 you know, there's like, maybe they have the day or time planned. And so there's a restlessness about getting to that, to that state. They seem a little withdrawn or moving into a more isolation stage. Uh, there's erratic sleep, having a hard time sleeping, visiting or calling people to say goodbye. You know, they want to go down their list and say goodbye to all of these people. They're giving away their prized possessions. They want to, you know, just like they say, well, you can't take it all with you. So they're giving these things away. And it may be an, an overly aggressive change in their personality. Now, these, <clears throat> excuse me, all of those uh, tips or clues are not necessarily those of someone who is suicidal. We see these types of actions in everyone. So don't decide, oh my God, oh, they're drinking alcohol and drugs, they're suicidal. No, 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 no. What we're looking for is the abuse and the change in character. Remember, we never get in trouble for an action. You, you, your challenge is a habit. And so, so those are some of the things, so you can go back and look at this and those are some of the things that you may look for or that you may notice. Don't, don't, you know, I don't necessarily say, you know, if we look for, because if you look for something, you're going to find it. So maybe what we want to do is just be aware of that big change in personality. The moves that you might notice, they, they're more depressed and a more depressive mood, a loss of interest in doing things. They don't want to do anything. We used to always do this on a certain day, but now they don't want to do anything. They go into rage more. Some of these are related to those behaviors we mentioned. Uh, they're a lot more irritable. Um, they're, they're, they're humiliated easily. There's a lot of anxiety and anger going on in their life. So those are some of the moves that you may notice if someone's considering taking their life by suicide. And so to close out the letter U, think of the words ultimately, ugly, and unnecessary. Ultimately, because... Ultimately, if suicide is uh, a short-term um, 
a short-term uh, uh, solution to uh, a, a, a life law. Ooh, I'm sorry. A, a short-term action um, to uh, uh, oh God, I can't even remember how to say it. But I hope you understand. I mean, it, but it's not the solution. It's a short-term. Um, um, mm, I can't think of that word. I lost it. Okay. But anyway, uh, ultimately, it, it, it does not cure you. It does not help the situation. Because most people who take their lives by suicide in some way, again, we go back to this being a treatable mental illness, in some way they think this is going to either stop the pain for them or it's going to make things better for someone else if they're not in the way. Those are the types of things that move people toward thinking about that. So ultimately, it's not a good idea. And ugly, why ugly? Well, because that's one of my favorite, my original acronyms, U-G-L-Y, unique, gifted, lovable you. Just reminding people that there's something about you that makes a difference. And so what we want to do is focus on the joy of being who we are. And that's something that will come later on as well. So unique, gifted, lovable you. You know, we have to have our self-esteem in check so that we can find that there is value in us staying on this planet and in, in people's lives. We're not a burden to people. All of us have disagreements, but we're not a burden to people. We are helpful to people. Let's continue to do that. And unnecessary, because again, it's not the answer. So it's unnecessary as a solution. We can find ways and we can find treatments, which is the next letter, which is the letter P, and that is psychotherapy. Specific types of psychotherapy have been P proven effective for treating depression. And so therefore, that's why suicide is really unnecessary. We can get help, especially in this day and age of advanced technology and um, science and, 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 and correct medication, not you know drugs, the right types of medications. These are they use this short, short term, these, these, this psychotherapy treatment, they use this short term lasting from 12 to 16 weeks, and they are formalized and interactive. <clears throat> so there are, there are four of them. Cognitive brain therapy, which is CBT, interpersonal therapy, IT, IPT, behavioral activation, BH, and cognitive behavioral analysis system of psychotherapy, CBASP. So those are some types. I think I'll put those in there. But those are some types of psychotherapy that can be used to combat depression and hopefully thwart someone's uh, attempt at suicide. And those, uh, uh, those with bipolar disorder, by the way, are at greater risk for suicide when they're in a depression, a depressive or a mixed mood state. So if you know somebody with bipolar um, disorder, you know, that those that's what made me want to look for those symptoms and behavioral and mood shift. Because when combined with depression, bipolar disorder, or actually any disorder, alcohol and drug abuse, that can increase the suicide risk. So let's close out the letter P and recognize that we have to have people, patients, prevention, and passion. We have to have the right people in our lives to help us stay positive so that we can see ourselves as worthy and then we have to have that patience with ourselves. Forgive yourself. A lot of times our impatience is with, we say it's with someone else, but we are impatient with ourselves and we're using our impatience through somebody else. So have that patience that you're going to be okay and that you're going to get through whatever type of depression or mood swing that you're going through, challenges, prevention, and obviously that's what we're talking about, trying to prevent someone taking their life, and passion. Think about what, what's your passion? You see, when people are, are connected to, again, a positive, to their passion for living, what their reason is for being in life, when they stay focused on that, that can help them move aside any thoughts of suicide. I mean, I, I've considered killing myself. I, you know, I don't know. I think, they, I think they say one in 15 people have considered suicide. So I, I've thought about it. And that, so it's not unnatural for you to think about it. I thought about it and said, no, that's not the answer. And I, you know, I can't think of all of the situations, but I gotta tell you, I've thought about it more than once. So, you know, and, and I'm not ashamed to say that because you know, no emotion is wrong. And what what we have to do is look at our reactions to the emotions. What do we do with the thoughts? And 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 when I had that thought, 
uh, it was one that I decided I was not going to go through with. What we get, uh, one of the things that I carry around with me still on the letter P and talking about prevention, the, uh, the National Guard uh, had military one source has what they call an ACE card. And an ACE card, this is how we talk about suicide prevention awareness in the military. And ACE is A-C-E, ask, care, and escort. In other words, ask someone, are you thinking of killing yourself? Don't ask them, are you thinking about hurting yourself? You know, it, it, don't try to soft pedal it. You have to say, are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about suicide or, or about uh, taking your life by suicide? Or uh, see, if you if you say to someone, are you thinking about hurting yourself? If their thought pattern is that that this pain that they're going through is unbearable, and that's why they want to take their life, or that they are a burden to someone else. They don't think it's hurting to take their life. They think that's going to be an answer. That's going to take make everybody else cool so they, because they won't have to take care of them. They, and then this pain that's inside them is going to go away. And that, you know, so, so no, I'm not going to hurt myself. I'm going to get rid of the pain. So you have to be point blank. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Are you thinking about taking your life by suicide? And depending on your relationship, you, you can ask that. It's a hard question. Just try what we tell the military personnel is try asking again in the mirror as a way of, of, of focusing. So before you decide to ask someone, try asking in the mirror so that you can come across as calm as you can. But at the same time, we're not worried about being cool if we're concerned about somebody's life based on what we see is, is going on. And their answer will fuel that conversation. Then the C and A stands for care. Remove any means that could be used for self-injury. So if they if they own a gun, get it out of the way. You know, uh, you know, make, get get the knives out of the way. You know, so that's the caring part. The E is the escort. Take them to uh, someone who can get them some help. Not necessarily taking their arm and pull them, but it, it, it's called a, a warm handoff. If you are not a therapist, but you know someone who can help them. Make sure you get that introduction, and and you know whether it's by if it's by phone, then you set up the date and then the time, but but preferably you want it to be right then and there, and you get that person and hand them off to that person rather than say, okay, here's the address, go there, this person will help you. So ask the hard question, show them that you care, and then escort them, take them to somebody, right? even if it's the primary care or calling nine one one. That's you escorting them so that they can take care of themselves. Then there's also one called ACT, A-C-T, which is ask, care, and treat. So you still got the first two, ask and care. And, and part of the ask is don't be afraid to ask, that we told you to practice. And then the caring part, again, is just listen. Once you ask them if they're, take, if they're planning on taking their life by suicide or killing themselves, ask them and then listen to what their reason is. Don't cut them off. No, 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 that's not a good reason. Don't be judgmental. Listen with empathy and, and there's another see compassion. Wow, I, mm, I hadn't thought of that. And just listen, and maybe you won't have an opinion. But, you know, that's where, it, you know, that's going to be the hardest part is to try to be non-judgmental. And then again, it, just as they say, escort and ace and act, it says treat. Take action, get some assistance, and then follow up on them. Even after you've Call 911 or taking them to a therapist, check on them and let them and, and find out how they're doing because that takes it back through the cycle. Because uh, when you check on them, you continue to show that you care. And now you can ask a different question and you can have a better conversation, possibly. So, so to close out the P is stay positive. Now we got the last letter that we're going to do for the day, which is Z. Now, what can a Z in the word puzzle? What could a, a Z have to do? with suicide prevention awareness. Well, I use the Z as zero, zero. You see, sometimes people who want to die by suicide think they have no other options, zero options. But as we know, in the alphabet, when you go from A to Z, after you get to Z, you get to start all over. <laughs> you know, you, you see A, B, C, D, F, G, H, L, M, L, O, P, A, Y, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. So when we're teaching kids, once you get to the letter Z, you get to start all over. And in the military time, when we use the, the military clock, zero is a fresh start. Zero hundred hours always means 
you know, that's midnight. That's that's where we start from. So especially since I was doing this presentation for a military group, but it's the same in our lives. Zero doesn't mean that we have no other options. It means we have a fresh start. Well, you know, I always say control your vocabulary. Don't let your vocabulary control you. So it's how you look at your words that can make a difference. And I say zero is a fresh start. Also three words with Z, zeal. Zen and zigzag. Zeal. Why? Because again, we want to treat life with zeal. We want to be enjoying life, finding a way to enjoy life. Zen. We think about that. We think we think about yoga and meditation. Yeah, because you, you need to calm down. As we talk about it, excuse me, in stress mastery, it's and we have a term called BFF, not best friends for life, but breathe, feel, and focus. When you feel yourself out of sorts, you want to get your brain back in alignment with where you're trying to go and, and get yourself calm back to a positive state. So you're going to try to control your breathing. It's just like when people say count to 10, you know, you want to control your breathing. So try to think in terms of three to five breaths in and three to five breaths out. You want to get closer to five, but let's start you with three and be realistic that if you're breathing, you know, if you're anxious, you're <laughs> so. Try to get it down to five breaths in and five breaths out. Then what are you really feeling? Ask yourself, what are you feeling? Why am I feeling this way? And knowing that you don't want to feel that way, focus on getting that thought turned around and getting yourself back in alignment. So when you get to this, that Zen moment, get to that BFF, breathe, feel, and focus, and find your way back out of this stressful situation that would make you think you should take your life. And then why Z? Why zigzag? Because this is not an easy plan that I'm laying out right now. It's, it, it, it's, it's not a straight line. Hey, this is what you, all you need to know and you can get over this. No, the plan is exact. You're going to change the plan. It's going to, it's going to falter here. You're going to revamp. It's going to escalate and speed up right here. It's zigzag. Life is about, you know, it's a puzzle, but we're zigzagging a lot. Very rarely do we get to walk a straight path except if it's that one path down the hallway rushing to the bathroom sometimes. And even that time, sometimes you might have to trip over a toy. <laughs> but life is a zigzag. So allow yourself and forgive yourself as if you don't just get it all cured in one sitting. It's a zigzag. And, and that's where we go back to that P for patience. We're being patient with yourself. And then there's faith, feeling as if there's hope. You have to trust yourself and know it's going to be all right. So let me close out with some uh, quiz questions that I'll give you the answer to. Five quiz questions. One, early into, and so this is, may some, be some another solution, solution things that you can use to think about. Early intervention decreases the likelihood of suicide. Yes. Early intervention, true or false? Yes. So the sooner we can find that out and get people to those psychotherapeutic types of, of rehab, the better. Talk therapy, by the way, is, is really one of the best. If you can if you can try to get to talk therapy before you get to medication, because once people get on meds, then that you can get addicted, and that could be a whole nother can of worms. Most of the time, people who plan suicide do not give any advance warning. False. The key is we have to know what to look for. So think about those behaviors that I mentioned: giving away stuff, the depressed modes. So they give the signs, but we have to know what to look for. So that one is false. People who plan to, to, to take their lives by suicide do give advance notice. Difficulty in a personal relationship or increased alcohol use are common warning signs in suicides. And obviously, there's one of the facts that shows that they give a signs away, because that's true. Uh, if the person does not directly tell you, there's no way of determining if they are depressed. That's false. Uh, again, we look at the behaviors. Most people are not going to come up and say, you know, um, I am depressed. You know, depression is a state, and we and if if we have the right friendship, we'll see that state, and that takes us back to that ask. Even if we're not worrying about asking about suicide, maybe you can ask. You know, what's going on today? You okay? Haven't you said that somebody? You don't look like yourself today. You're in a good mood. So it's that type of thing. But again, it's not the, the action; it's the pattern. Once we see the pattern and the habit, we may think that it's going to escalate to something else. And finally, talking with someone about their thoughts of dying will push them over the edge. False. Talking about suicide, asking about suicide is not going to be the determining factor. So you don't need to, well, I better not talk about it because that might make them do it. 
No, talking about it is what might make them decide not to do it because they because they you want to get them in that conscious state of mind and where you're counting your blessing with you being one of the blessings by showing your concern and compassion. So talking to someone about it does not necessarily push them over there. Is there that chance? Absolutely. But is there is just as much chance of, uh, you know, of that in any conversation? So don't hold back. If you see you're noticing something, uh, you know, someone needs to, oh, you know, they might not be aware. Oh, my goodness, was I doing that? No, 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 no. Here's where I'm going. And that, again, that, that builds the friendship. So I want to close out, close out by saying that www.afsp.org, American Federation of Suicide Prevention, is a good source of research. And, and I'm sure it will connect you to some real stuff and let you be a better resource. www.afsp, American Foundation of Suicide Prevention.org. And what, what, one of the things that I found out is that they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine colors of beads. So if you do a suicide walk, which is what something I do annually, you everybody wears different a different color beads. And I have my beads now hanging from my mirror in my car. And these are the different colors beads of why you're participating in the suicide walk. And if you wear white beads, it's because you have the loss of a child. Red is the loss of a spouse or a partner. Gold is the loss of a parent. Orange is the loss of a sibling. Then these are two suicide, by the way. Purple is for the loss of a relative or a friend, which I had it. I have. Uh, I, I I use the purple because I have a friend who uh, took their life by suicide. Silver is the loss of a first responder or someone in the military. Green is a personal struggle or attempt. If you are struggling with suicide or have made attempt, then you wear the green bead. Blue is that you support suicide prevention. So therefore, everybody can wear blue. Everybody on this broadcast you know, can wear blue beads to support suicide. And lastly, teal. And that is for a friend or family member of someone who struggles or has attempted. So those are the nine colors of the beads that people wear. So that you know, it's not just random that they happen to have on these beads when they do the suicide awareness prevention walk. But you can be a part of that. Find a way to get involved and know that you are an important piece of the puzzle. You do have something to do with someone deciding to take their life by suicide or to not end their lives by suicide. Next week, I'll talk about the L and the E in the word puzzle so that we can see that we need to put it all together and that when we are working together, we make a difference. Thanks again. And that, as you can see, when we're working together, we're the glue. Glue, G-L-U-E, God's love undoes everything. You make a difference and you help us keep it together. Thank you for joining the broadcast and I'll see you next week. Over now. Ciao.